Welcome to Opinion Havers, a movie podcast for f- I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. Tyler, what did we watch? We watched On the Waterfront. <laughs> I, it's the only one I came up with. And like, they say it in the movie. And I was like, that'll be fun to say. And then I realized, is this a slur? <laughs> so, oh, it's a slur. It's a, you know, I just, it's in the movie. And I thought it was whimsical that someone actually said it. And so I did it. And we're here. Tyler, why did you pick this movie? What? Look, I didn't pick this movie. I don't even know what you're talking about. Marlon who? On the what? I don't even know what this is. Look, if I picked it, I would have ventured the show. My cord is all caught around my thing and it's whatever. You know, do you need? No, we're doing <laughs> it. We're doing it live. All right. What? We have the studio audience. Oh, yeah. Tiffany's in the other room. She's Just our studio audience. Dropping eaves. Yeah. All right. She never hears a word we say. What? I ask her all the time, what do you think right? about this? She's like, I don't know what you're saying. I don't yeah. Know. I didn't I mean, hear any of it. I wouldn't listen to us either. Yeah. If I were there. Yeah. <sighs> this On the Waterfront is a classic film. It's about Marlon Brando or some character that Marlon Brando plays. He's the longshoreman. They work on the docks. He uh, ugh, has to decide what's he what's he going to do? Is he going to side with the mobsters that give him the cushy job at the corrupt union? Or is he going to do hashtag do the right thing? It's a question that's plagued us all. Yeah. So are we are we doing our new format, Cody? Are we I don't going know. back to I think we should. I Here's why I move. I'm going to move during the podcast to make this move. Every I, one of them. I, I'll accept your motion, but do does that does but, that mean I still get to tell you what I think before yeah. we go? Yeah, we do our thoughts and then we do I the rants. I want to know your thoughts. And yes, I agree. We should do that. So what? tell me your impression. What's your first, your quip? Give me your quip. Look, the hot presses need a blurb. And I need you to give it to me. The, the press is the... Presses want a blurb, Cody? I'll give him a blurb. Okay. All right. Yes. Marlon Brando kills dummy over a pigeon. All right. That's that's it. All right. But that's fine. I love this movie and I hate myself for loving it. <laughs> as I, I was, love the black and white movies and I'm mad about as it. As I was watching it, I was like, you know what? This is a lot like <laughs> that stupid black and white movie that Tyler loves. <laughs> oh, I love it. Wow. Okay. I, like I, I actually thought you might like it. I loved it. I'm glad you enjoyed I'm it. I'm glad we watched it. All right. I'm mad that I like it. Let me tell you my thoughts. Tell That's me. pretty good. <laughs> I didn't like love it, but I did enjoy it. Um, and it, it drew me in over time. I have many questions. <laughs> I don't know if you have a lot of questions. I have many questions to ask you, but I did enjoy it. And it, it's definitely one of those. I can see why it's important to the evolution of film. Like you really see, you know, even between your tale of two cities and this movie, you can see that, oh, yeah, Citizen Kane happened. Film is advancing. We're, we're getting more, you know, we're playing more with the art form and stuff. And I really appreciated that. And, uh, you know, Marlon, Marlon Brand is pretty good. And I do appreciate his, uh, the absolute enigma of his personality and, <laughs> and weird onset behavior. I have some fun facts for later, but. Oh, that's good. I'm excited about your fun facts. Because as you know, Marlon Brando, he, he produces some fun facts. <laughs> oh, he's a, he's an animal and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else to say before before it, it comes time? I mean, there's a lot to say, but I feel like it's all we're going to rant about it for 10 minutes and then discuss our rants. Right. That's the whole I think. So, yeah, I think that's going to happen. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Oh, good, sir. Oh, my good. Wow. Do you have a preference? I feel like I could go first, but I'm also worried that I'm going to run out of steam at three minutes, but I don't well, think I will. You know me. Do you have a lot? Yeah, I have a lot. Do you want to do that you first so that you don't you're not tempted to respond to my rant in your rant? Um, do you want me to go first so you can knock things out of your rant? I'll try it. Let me try it. Let me give it a shot. OK, let me give it a shot. All right. Ready? Yeah. Go. 
<laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what any of I don't even realize, I don't know what any of these notes mean. I enjoyed the movie. It was pretty good. Here's my first thought. Everyone in this movie is gay from Marlon Brando. They are touching this boy. They're slapping his cheeks. They're grabbing his neck. It. I was ready. Like I was. I didn't know if he was like the mob's fluffer or what, but it was getting the first 20 minutes of this movie. There's a lot of commenting about him and touching of him. I'm glad he was OK. You know, like I I don't know. I was he some sort of teenage sex slave for the mob? I would say probably. I would not be surprised if that were the case. D hey, you were gay for him, too. OK, don't think that you weren't. I saw you see this movie. I see you trying to pretend like it wasn't true, that you that it wasn't that way. OK, someone asked someone if they're a wise guy. They did it. The classic film noir mobster. What are you, a wise guy? They said it. They said it in this movie. And I feel like I unlocked a trophy. I feel like a video game achievement should have popped up in the corner of the screen and been like, what are you, a wise guy? You know, that's where I was at. And I loved it. OK. <laughs> Someone turns <laughs> Marlon Brando, the police are there. They're like, hey, did you see that guy who died, who we have witnesses saying you talked to him? Did you had you talk to him or something? He was he did the coolest, pettiest, weirdest thing I've ever seen someone do. Whenever he spoke to the one police officer, he turned the other way and like mumbled his answer. And it was the biggest power move I've ever seen. It's like, oh, you're on my right. Let me just lean over left here and like. Half answer your question with a mumble. I loved it. It was great. It was perfect. I was trying to figure out the, the leading lady in this movie. I could not figure out what her face was. And you know what? I'm going to save that. I need you to mull on that because I'm going to ask you later to come up with who she looks like. OK, modern day, what celebrity she looks like. Think about it. Mull over. Don't say it now. Don't say it now. But I'll tell you my answer later, too. OK, that there is a man in this movie. I think he's like the one of the black union members who doesn't know how to eat a sandwich. I think it was, maybe it wasn't him. It was someone, one of the union guys, takes a bite out of a sandwich. And like, most of the bite is hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> he reaches up and grabs like a stringy piece of meat and like pulls it off. And then he goes up and grabs another piece of bread and pulls it back. Like, I didn't, he had a bite hanging out of his mouth. And then he was grabbing it and pulling it off. I didn't understand who taught him who needs to teach him how to eat a sandwich. Did you, just nod your head. Did you see it? Did you see it? No, you didn't. You're a liar. <laughs> you didn't see it. Oh, it hurt. I just wanted to grab his face and teach him how to eat a sandwich. Oh, my goodness. The father, he had like two and a half noses on his face. <laughs> I was worried. It looked cancerous. It looked mutated. I was afraid for his life. OK, he needs a screening. He needs a biopsy. He needs modern medicine to rush to his aid. He probably has the worst case of nose cancer that anyone has ever had. And I don't even think he knows. I don't think cancer was invented yet when this movie came out. I'm pretty sure about that. OK, my favorite. Look, there's a lot of acting. OK, there's mumble acting, right? We've seen shout acting, okay? This movie, gum acting, okay? Aggressive Marlon Brando gum chewing that carried the performance, and it was powerful. It was powerful to see how one stick of gum could elevate someone's, someone's role to such heights, and I think we should start doing it on the podcast, okay? Do you have gum on you? I didn't bring any. No, we can't do it. This is, this is the worst... This is the worst day, okay? You know the Mid-Atlantic accent. We all love it. We all cherish it. We've experienced it, all right? It already happened in Sunset Boat. At one point, Bailey, she was like half watching the movie. She was in the bathroom, and someone was saying a line. They were like, yeah, and you see it. You can't get over it without it. And then I heard her going, meh, 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 meh. Like she was just making Charlie Brown teacher sounds from across the house. And it was probably the best thing that's ever happened to my life. I don't know. She was like a bird. You know how birds will like a mockingbird in the other room. It was it was one. OK, let's talk about gum. How about hair? Act? Marlon Brando's hair was different in every single scene. OK, sometimes it was slicked back. Sometimes it was fluffed up. Sometimes it was parted over. 
I didn't understand how his hair could look oh, I'm so have to cut you off, different. Dude. It's oh, that's the end of it. I mean, I only got halfway. You I only got halfway. Your land. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You wasted your time, and the, you can't have that time back. All right. Well, you're you're wasting your time. I'm about to start your time <clears throat> right now. Here we go. Ready? Mm. Co- <coughs> Marlon Brando killed a dummy over a pigeon. That's what happened. That's the movie. <laughs> all right. He said, "I have your pigeon." He let the pigeon free. Pigeon, uh. Then they threw a dummy off the roof, and everybody's like, "He's dead." Not a real person, everybody. It was a dummy. We all saw it. Anyway, they said bum. I tried to keep a bum count. All right. They use the word bum a lot in this. Bum. You bum. I'm a bum. This bum calling me a bum. He's a bum. I'm not a bum. You're bum. Bum. This bum over here called me a bum. Can you believe that bum? I'm not a bum. I got 15. I looked up the script. I looked up the script and I did a word search for bum. 23 uses of the word bum in this movie, which I feel like is aggressive, but it's mostly the fact that they're all so like, it's no bum. And then 15 (laughs) seconds of nonstop bum. They've made entire sentences out of the word bum. All right. I also, he asked the question, who killed Joey Doyle? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be it. This is going to be the thing. It was in the movie trailers. I bet who killed Joey Doyle. They say it once. They say it one Frickin' time, and then never again. Just the pastor. The pastor, he got a big old nose, but you know what? It was a different time. A better time, all right? Marlon Brando, you're thinking, oh, such good acting. He's looking, he's looking at cue cards. He did not memorize a word of this. I guarantee you, that man does not make eye contact with a single person. He's always looking just off to the side of him. Looking at what? They gave a girl with big old boobies. They gave her a big card with his lines on it so that he'll look at her and he'll read his lines. Because if there's one thing we know about Marlon Brando, he won't memorize nothing. He won't do nothing. He's not going to lose weight. He's not going to gain weight. He's not going to show up on time. He's not going to leave on time. He's not going to learn his lines. He's not going to chew the right kind of gum. He's not going to not chew the wrong kind of gum. He's going to do what he wants. He's there and you just film him in the scenario and hope it lines up with the movie. That's what all you have to do, Marlon Brando, because he's Marlon Brando. All right. Oh, it's fine. I have the phone. I didn't punch it off the edge that I like I thought I was going to. Here's the real travesty of this situation, Cody. This has proved it, right? Was it one's a something, one's a something, two's a coincidence, three's a pattern, right? This is the third black and white movie we've watched that I'm like, I love this movie. I hate myself. All right. I love the Transformers movies, but I love them a lot less now. They do a lot less for me. But we watched this movie and I was like, I love this movie. All right. You've got I'm buying vinyls. I'm pre-ordering vinyls. I'm liking black and white movies. You've ruined me. I might be moving to California soon. All right. You've ruined me as a person, Cody. I'm turning into what I hate. I was supposed to bring balance to the movie (laughs) force, not leave it in darkness and ruin. All right. I've, we've ruined everybody. We've ruined the world doing this show, Cody. They talk about D and D a lot in this show. I liked it. Did you watch it with subtitles? Nod your head. Don't nod your head. You didn't. You were a fool. How did you understand anything in this movie? You need the subtitles. You're watching these movies. Do yourself a favor. Put on them subtitles. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a search here. I have the script. I'm going to search for D. And D, nothing, nothing. Ugh, why didn't I get anything, Cody? Cody, look at me. Tell me why I didn't get anything. They say it so much. I'm getting nothing. Whatever. We've ruined it. It's over. I hate this movie now because the script has betrayed me. It's not Dungeons and Dragons, everybody. It's deaf and dumb, which is the policy. Don't say nothing. You didn't see nothing. You didn't hear nothing. Which is not what deaf and dumb means. So you didn't hear nothing, you don't say nothing. But if you couldn't say nothing, you wouldn't have heard nothing. If you didn't hear nothing, you wouldn't say nothing. Why do you need both? It's redundant, Cody. And I don't. It's inefficient, and I hate them. All right? This is a movie about a union. All right? That's what this is about. If you just watched it and cut out the, uh, like, 
35 seconds of the film to make it very obvious that it's about a union. You would think it's about a mob boss. It's not. It's about a union boss. Union or mobs confirmed the Illuminati. They control the waterfront in the 50s. All right. This is all based on real facts, Cody. Earth is flat. The unions are controlled by the mob. The priest has cancer of the nose. You confirmed that. That's, these are things we know. All right. All right, Tyler, I'm going to have to cut you off mid-sentence there. I know you were saying something real important. I don't care. All right? I don't care about it. Okay? <clears throat> You've had a moment to think about it. Let me let me ask you. Now, our leading lady, who, uh, let's give her some credit. Uh, let me just pull up her name here. Oh, she's not going to be in the top 50 people. She has an Oscar for this movie. All right, here we go. Ava Marie Scott, who plays Eddie Doyle. Edie. Edie Doyle, she's in this movie. <laughs> all right, you may know her by from On the Waterfront, North by Northwest, and Superman Returns as Martha Kent. All right, yes. that upset me. Okay, so Ava Marie Saint, who does she look like? Modern day celebrity, go Martha Kent. All right, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> let me give you my answer, and then I'll let you give your answer. Then I'll tell you the correct answer, which is Bailey's answer. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. She is, appears to be a combination of Madonna and Bryce Dallas Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard, Ron Howard's daughter, plus Madonna, the mother of our Lord and Savior, <laughs> equals um, this actress. Okay, give me your answer. Who is she? What does she look like? Don't I think about it. I feel it. I mean, I'm, I'm not even, I'm just Search looking. your feelings. I'm trying to find the, I'm trying to find feelings. Uh, I gave you so much time to think well, about Well, she this. looks like Martha Kent from Superman Returns. Stop That's it. what she looks like. Oh, she does a voice of Legend of, in Legend of Korra. Yeah. How is she still alive? She's almost, she would be a hundred years old today. She's still alive. Is she? Her last credit was in 2020. I don't. Okay. She is 97. Oh, thank right. you. Okay. You got to give me. Okay. A select, not a character in a movie that she plays. <laughs> Tell me a human person in the real world. I'm trying to get a good picture. I mean, I mean, if I had to pick a modern day person, it would probably be Bryce Dallas Howard. But you said that's wrong. That's fine. It's a good guess. The correct answer is Gwen Stefani. <laughs> she she is the spitting image of Gwen Stefani. Bailey's right. You were wrong. How did she play Martha Kent 14 years ago? That would make her. No, that would make her. 80 years old, right? Yeah, she was 80 year old playing the mother of Superman. I get. Yeah. Oh, wait, are they like a retired couple that? Get Superman? No, it, it might were they in their 40s? What, I think she's also like, yeah, they were old when he landed. And also, he's an adult now. Also, it's Superman. Should she be 80 years old, though? How old is Superman? 20? <laughs> Superman How does is 800 work? years old. How does know? time work in Superland? Okay. This is not a movie about Superman. And you, okay. We can't talk about that. It's not allowed. Okay. Marlon Brando. I liked his character. I thought his character was interesting because his character was very much like, I'm just a young dude. I'm just kind of caught up in whatever's going on. It was an interesting position to be in. Yeah. And I did find him charming. Yeah, he did. In a sort of, a very... this dude don't care about, you know when the girls go for the dude who doesn't love them and is like, that dude is trouble. And he's not a good dude. He's a little bit handsome, but not that handsome. But they all love him. That's how I felt watching this. Well, here's the problem with what you just said, Cody. You don't think he's that handsome. But as we all know, guys are terrible judges of which guys are attractive to girls. Mm -hmm. Right? I like, mean, what? What are the girls like? They like uh, Steve Buscemi and, you know, those kind of guys. The hunks we all know. Yeah. But there are a Adam lot of like, Scott. older guys. Like older actors and stuff. Will Ferrell. Like the, these are the hot, <laughs> hot items. Those are the those are the, the ladies go crazy for Will Ferrell. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you had to pick who's the hottest 
guy in Hollywood today. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, actually? Yeah. Uh, you know, mm, Chris Hemsworth or Henry Cavill? That's who you think is the hottest? The I most say Chris attractive. Hemsworth is very universally beloved. See, Hems? I'm not saying who you think is the hottest. I'm saying who do you think is the most attractive? Who do you, Cody, <laughs> think is the hottest dude? The sexiest man. Sexiest man alive? It's probably Ryan Reynolds. Which is weird, because he looks better now than he did 10 years ago. I'm on Ranker.com. Everybody's <laughs> favorite. <laughs> hottest man of 2021 ranked. Top one. Guess what? Chris Hemsworth? Is that what you said? That's a dumb guess. Was it Johnny Henry? Depp. Shut Number up. two. That's who are you guessing? That's right. It's Sam Hune. What? Number three, what Chris Hemsworth. This? We're moving okay. on. Number I did four, it. I did Chris it. Evans. I did it. Number five, Every Chris. Reggae Jean Page. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Then Alexander Draymond. You know who that is. Jason Momoa, who I'd put as number one on any list, no matter what the list is. I don't care. He's the top of the list. All right. Because he's the best. All right. And we love him. Mm -hmm. And every, you know what girls say to me when they say that? What? He's too big. He's like the rock. He's too big, too bulky. And I'm like that. I want to nestle into this man's muscles and feel protected. All mm -hmm. right. If he's good enough for Lisa Bonet, he's good enough for all of us. He, he's a good man and a good father. <laughs> Liam Hemsworth, number eight. Henry Cavill, another one I'd put always at number. Liam Hemsworth should never be number eight. Liam okay. Hemsworth is so much worse than Chris Hemsworth. I can, but Chris is too big, Cody. <laughs> Liam's too small though. Henry He's Cavill, who I famously have said multiple times, I would have his babies. Henry Cavill should be top 10. He I don't should. understand. He's number nine. Oh, okay. He should be top five. Now, who's number 10, you ask yourself? Who is it? Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Who? How many? All three of my top three are on that list, dude. But who did Ryan Reynolds beat? Somebody that I think most women would put above Ryan Reynolds. Who? Tom Hiddleston. Every girl loves Tom Hiddleston. Um, yeah, that's true. Okay, here's my question. Let me ask you this. Where's Steve Buscemi on this list? He is a hero. He's a national treasure. He's got the biggest, wettest eyes of any man alive. And he's a volunteer firefighter. So how is he not? Where is he at? There was one of those, like, people's sexiest people of the year. Um, what's his name? Ed Sheeran landed on there, like, towards the back at, the, like, one of the last fun. He's like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why am I here? Why am I on this? Because he's delightful and everybody loves him. There was also one of these internet polls and Joe Lysette, who is a com who's a British comedian, um, landed himself on like the top five of the list because he bought a bunch of votes online. <laughs> he like <laughs> petitioned for himself with all these bots and he was like number three or something. It's a pretty great. You're not finding Steve not finding Stevie B not on there? Shimmy, no. well, this is upsetting. I've passed by several Korean pop stars and uh, Kit Harrington. How do I get on this list? How do I get on ranking? I mean, Ryan Gosling is number fifty. How do I become a ranker? Here's, Here's the, the thing about Ryan Gosling: shirtless Ryan Gosling is very different from ranking Ryan Gosling with clothes on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. If anyone saw Crazy Stupid Love Ryan Gosling with the, the scene with his shirt off where he does the dirty dancing thing, everyone would be like, oh, yeah, no, he's a top 20 dude. But then if you put him in like a T-shirt and khakis, you're like, eh, he's like a B, B minus. How dare you? Ryan you know Gosling is just hot Ryan Reynolds. All right. But his eyes aren't quite. Easy. No, no. I take it back. <laughs> Ryan Gosling is pretty Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is hot Ryan Reynolds. Ah, I hear that. Get that? You understand? What Ryan Reynolds is hot. 2020 Ryan Reynolds is 2005 Ryan Reynolds as a hot dad. That's the thing. That's what I understand about Ryan Reynolds. Where do you think? He had a weird tan okay. and like it was too clean shaven. And now he wears like a small beard and stubble and he's he's you could eat him off a plate. Here's my question to you. If I <laughs> ask which I'm going to ask you which one of these two is higher. Alexander Skarsgård, Scott Eastwood. Um, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> For me, the Scars Guards have been ruined by the movie It. <laughs> because one of them is Pennywise. I can never look at any uh, yeah. of them the same. So, so I would say Scott. 
Scott East because Scott Eastwood is just hot Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Young Clint Eastwood is pretty handsome, I would say, but in a very like rugged, you know, dirty cowboy kind of way. <laughs> Whereas Scott Eastwood is just like a bona fide hot dude. So uh, uh, Skarsgård is higher. He's 66 to Scott Eastwood 67. Alex. Timothy, Alex Skarsgård. Forget the Oscars. <laughs> Let's just have a show. Where a celebrity host <laughs> argues with random guest celebrities about this list. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Alex Skarsgård. Oh, you know the one that all the girls like? Um, he's the one that I... He plays Christian Grey. That's the guy that all the girls like. Yeah. Oh, Alexander hey. Skarsgård, he's the one with the pantsless photo in yeah. <laughs> on IMDb. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's pretty good looking. What um, about Eddie Redmayne? He's the he's the one that he's the one I always go he's to. He's one. He's he's one of those. He's kind of like a Cumberbatch, where it's like he's a, you know he's not like a handsome dude, super square jaw, but he is handsome dude where he's like got fine features and girls like him. But I, I once again ruined by the movie Jupiter Ascending and the Theory of Every. Basically, every Eddie Redmayne movie has ruined Eddie Redmayne for me. Does that make sense? Okay, let's talk about our travesty, and then I'll put the list down, okay? All right. First off, Jared Leto, not in the top 100. Give me a break, all right? But that was a side note to the real travesty. Okay, you're going to put Cristiano Ronaldo on this list and put him (laughs) at 110? Oh, Ranker, you've lost every ounce. Have you seen- Hold on, hold on. What is this list? Is it not actors? Is it just dudes? It's famous people, I guess. I don't know. How are you not going to put Ronaldo in the top- I mean, at least 50, but he can go higher for sure. Here's the thing. Have you seen the Ice Bucket Challenger video that Cristiano Ronaldo (laughs) did? No, I have not. I've never been more gay for a man in my entire life. Because not only is he doing it, he is stripped down to just his his brand boxers. Yeah. Which leave absolutely zero to the imagination. Mm -hmm. Nothing. They're showing off everything. And then it's him in the middle of a football pitch da- getting doused in water. And do they do a slow-mo shot? You're darn right. And I'm pretty sure his video raised more money than what's everyone his, else's. What's combined. his OnlyFans? <laughs> and why hasn't he started one? You know he'd make more money off of that. He'd than- make more money off that than he does per- being a top three football player in the world. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well. Because you got Messi. Messi's not that great looking. Ronaldo's top three. Yeah, that's the thing about Messi. Messi is incredible, but he's technically, he's an inch shorter than the national average. So for a professional soccer player, that's very short, right? He's slightly below average height and he's fine looking. Yeah. Ronaldo is a tall, tan Portuguese man (laughs) who is about as good at soccer. (laughs) Yeah. Who like spends way more time in the weight room just and you know it's just out there probably like eating paella and tanning nude on a beach i'm guessing is that that's what portuguese people do right right paella is a spanish dish right i have no idea (laughs) i was close though right is he portuguese or is he from south america he's portuguese okay because that's it that's okay that's the real thing about the messi and ronaldo uh rivalry the problem is ronaldo's in europe where soccer is bigger soccer is huge in south america but like europe is the mecca of soccer that's where the so like ronaldo gets to play in the euros Lionel messi will never play in the euros because he is not from europe and he has no heritage claim to europe you know what i'm saying right here's my question to you how do you feel about our city's apparent out of nowhere huge push to try to convince the uh to try to draw the world cup to our city and whenever the next one is. Well, here's the thing about the World Cup. If the World Cup comes to the United States, do they do it by city? I guess they do it by city, but yeah. normally they do it. Like when they did the Sochi, is that Olympics? The World Cup, when Sochi it was in was Russia, Olympics. they play all over. Yeah. they play. So, I mean, should they have a couple matches in Kansas City? Definitely. Because U.S. soccer trains here for the men's team. Yeah. They have training facilities in Kansas City. They usually, like when they did it in Brazil, they did it in the one city. That's where the main matches would have. No, well, no, it was all over Brazil. Oh. Because they'll be like, oh, yeah, today, especially when it was in Russia, it was like, oh, yeah, no, we're on East Coast Russia, totally different weather than West Russia, Mm -hmm. you know? So they they usually do it all over. Even if, like, it's headquartered in that city, like, they do play all over. 
they well like they just did the gold cup here um it might even be happening now but the gold cup is happening here so that's like you know they the european tournament they do a south america tournament they do a north america tournament that's the gold cup yeah. and they played a bunch of games here at well, sporting stadium i know there is in kansas city we've got two big soccer stadiums i don't know where the other one is i know there's two of them where's the other one no idea no idea but they could also they were they could do yeah. arrowhead stadium and they want to build another bigger stadium for the soccer team. Yeah, that'd be cool. But yeah, they because they were going to have like a, an exhibition match, like a premier Premier League exhibition match at Arrowhead. I think it got moved last minute to whatever. But at they one point, they're like, yeah, we'll do it at Arrowhead. Which they removed like the Arrowhead off of there. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Crazy. Wow. Now it's going to be the CGFY stadium at Arrowhead. <laughs> I hate I hate it. Yeah, I hate it so much. Everybody hates it, but you know they want to put a big football stadium in downtown. So I don't know where they're going to put that. But. that here's what they're going to do: they're going to explode the Kansas City Star Building, and whatever is destroyed by that explosion, that is where the football stadium will go. But that that building is not that big. <laughs> it is just glass. Building. It's not, but it's south of the dividing highway, and they could buy up the buildings around it for considerably less than if they tried to like replace the you know the sprint center or whatever you know they're gonna knock down all of our hundred and something year old skyscrapers right. and build a stadium here's what they do they build it on top of the skyscraper <gasps> a floating cloud yes. city era how do you feel about the name change are you are you are where are you at the chiefs are they gonna change the name here's what i okay i have an opinion let's say the chiefs decide to change their name to be more culturally sensitive what would you change it to? And when I say my answer, you're going to feel like an idiot. The <laughs> <Go> Braves. <ahead>. <laughs> the great answer. The Greg Dan should be the Arrowheads. <laughs> it's stupid, but they could keep all their same branding. <laughs> They'd be like, I don't know. We are air. They might as well be called the Rocks. <laughs> like yeah. The big sharp rocks. But anyway, that's what I would do. We're the Arrowheads now. Deal with it. The stadium's already called Arrowhead. Our logo has an Arrowhead on it. No one could be offended. It's a rock. <laughs> That's what I would do. Everybody would be offended. Here's the thing. The Chiefs very smartly, I feel like, kind of like started telling the guy who was the mascot to just be like, man, just don't. Just don't. You know, what's well, so going to stop? Oh, what, the guy that wears a big headdress? Yeah, we're going to stop having him go out as often or ever. Uh -huh. We're going to stop selling any headdress style stuff. And we're just going to kind of let that I wonder, fade. I, just, I wonder if they'll slide it on the radar if they want. Because... For me, it's fine, but I know I'm not Native American. So if people are offended by it, I could see it being one of those that's just on the line. You can go either way. But if people eventually, you know, what's going to happen? My dad just calls them the chefs anyway. So I'm like, you can just do the chefs. You drop one letter, you're good to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like why they had to change the the soccer team from the Wizards. All the Wizards, the Wizard community. They were up in the D and D community. They were furious. They were like, they should technically be sorcerers, you know. And it was a whole thing. They just decided rebrand away from magic, and just do a vague European <laughs> soccer name. Yeah. Speaking of D and D, tell me more about the movie, Cody. Yeah. The, here's the problem. I have a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah. Run through right, real right, fast. I can do. It. I can do. It. We can cut out most of that middle thing, conversation. Is Marlon Brando charming? Yes. Is he handsome? Yes. Also, no. Because the first half of the movie, I'm like, that's a pretty good looking dude. Like a fresh face, young lad, whatever. He's doing a great job. Then they started doing a lot of close-ups. And then I was like, never mind. <laughs> These close-ups aren't... He looks a lot better in a mid-shot. Get away from the close-ups, Marlon. He's a beautiful man. Like, get away from him, Brando. You got the, his hooded eyelid things are just kind of ruining the vibe. All right? Of the head, I would say at least. So yeah. Um, also, I think it's funny. So the brother, so right, he sends the dude to go upstairs. Goes on the roof. They throw a dummy down. <laughs> Someone's like, I think somebody fell off the roof, <laughs> which is great. And because um, it's like no one falls off a roof. You jump or you're pushed. <laughs> no one's out here skipping rope on a roof and falling off. And let, like you fall off a house roof that's one or two stories. You don't in the fall air. off a thirteen floor, thirteen floor story walk up. Yeah, that's not how that goes. Anyway, I love that. So he's right. He's in trouble. He's like, look, that was a friend of mine. I was just, I just thought the boss needed to talk to him. I thought they said, hey, we might rough him up a little bit, but look, we're just trying to get him back on the track with us. You know? 
Right. Dies. So Marlon Brando's in terrible situations. Like, I got a cushy job. I feel bad about the dude, but I'm not going to rat on anybody. I'm here at the union. The mob's running it, and they're keeping it cushy for me. But then the hot sister rolls by. You know how she do? She rolls by, and her thing is that she's kind of there the whole time. You know? Yeah. That's her role. Her job is to just be wherever the action is, which I thought was a little a little bit contrived. You're like, oh, she's just following. She's just there. She's the only woman in the whole movie, basically, <laughs> except for like the scene where they're in the bar. You know, she's just there with all the dock workers and the mobsters and the police. She's standing there. Anywho, she's there. She's hot. And so Marlon Brando's like, I don't know what to do. I may have killed her brother, but she's hot. That's basically the movie. Yeah. Am I wrong? Am I missing anything here? No, that's the movie. Anyway, it's my favorite thing time. about his character is he's kind of doofy a little bit. But she's like upset and inconsolable. And he's like, why you gotta be? What's wrong? <laughs> like, you killed her brother two days ago. He was Marlon Brando was confounded when she was getting upset at stuff. And it's like her brother just died. And you are at fault. <laughs> like you are culpable. You are part of the murder that happened. Yeah. I just thought it was funny whenever he was like, well, why you got to be all upset? <laughs> yeah. Marlo, you got to have some respect. He's like, that was minutes ago. Get over mm-hmm. it. Such a woman. I just Ugh, thought, yeah, you know? I thought that was funny. Um, I, I do appreciate that. There's a point where he decides, you know, he's, he's talks to the father. He's going back and forth. He doesn't know what to do. And he does decide to confess to her, you know? Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm going to tell her. And I really appreciate, I thought it was very somatic the way they did it. Because we already know what he did. We know that he realizes it was wrong and he's telling her. And instead of hearing him tell her, we see them having the conversation, but there's like loud banging noises and the train is going. And I thought it was a really, a really good way to show, you know, the emotions of the scene, you know, by just having like the overwhelming noise. And I, I really like that. I thought it was one of the examples where we're like, oh, I think film is starting to advance forward and become less of just, oh, this is a play happening and people are talking to, no, let's let's try to use some of the forms of this medium to, you know, we already know the information it's going to say, so let's let's try to show it in a different way. It's more interesting. I really like that. There is a man in this movie with a cigarette. A big floppy cigarette. Did you see it? It was like obviously a very poorly hand rolled cigarette thing. Oh yeah, it was. It was driving me crazy. I was like, very get bad. that that and the dude eating the sandwich <laughs> was grabbing at the bite hanging out. I was like, these dudes. Who is the prop guy <laughs> that is just letting this happen? Who is not whacking these people on the head and be like, no one can focus on what's going on because you have a comically floppy cigarette hanging out of your mouth that's how it was cody it was a different time <laughs> a better time Marlon Brando. the kind of time where you just to make it better that you murdered her brother you just here have a you have a stick of gum and you're just trying to try to shove it in her mouth real quick there <laughs> yeah. which to me thought was sweet did bailey also think that was sweet because i did not think it was i don't know sweet. She, she was in and out of the movie like i said so i don't know if she got that i was he really, this movie is a little problematic because he really forces himself on her. Where he's like, you're upset I killed your brother? Let me make out with you. And she's like, please don't. And then they make out. And then, of course, they do the old Hollywood thing where it's like, all right, now that we're kissing, this is cool. But like, yeah. that was not the moment. <laughs> I didn't think. I didn't think it was the moment for the stick of gum. I didn't think it was the moment for the make out. He was, he was on it. Yeah. Okay, he's upset. This is towards the end of the movie. Like, he's kind of upset at what's happened. He doesn't know what to do. He's feeding his birds. He has a handful of what looks like bird seed. And it seems like he's feeding the birds. And then he takes a bite of it. Like he slips some of the seed. Was that bird food or was it? Did I misread the situation? I was thinking it was either like sunflower seeds kind of thing or um, just bread crumbs. Because that would make more sense if he just like popped a piece of bread. I was so confused when I'm like, oh, he's feeding birds. Oh, he's (laughs) Eating bird seed? I don't. Okay. Yeah. I mean that it's all plausible. Was, he also could have just been eating a snack of something, you know, like some peanuts or popcorn. Well, or I think something. he was eating whatever, but I think he was feeding them something you could. I don't know. If, I guess a bird would eat popcorn, popcorn, right? Like if I was eating popcorn, I could throw a popcorn. We would both. I eat some of the okay. same food as birds. I let's, guess. <laughs> let's, 
Let's divert again for a minute here. Cody, what do birds eat? Seeds, not seeds. Seeds, if you were worms, going, worms. If you're seeds. going to the park, worms. you're going to the park Crackers. to feed birds. Bird, bread, Wait. bread. Is that what you're feeding? Bread. Birds? Bread? Bread crumbs. Okay. Pieces, little pieces. Little pieces of bread. Little pieces of bread. Okay. That's where you're wrong, Cody. Because they can, if you feed them the wrong kind of bread, they can blow up. Like, pow. They can't eat rice. If it's like, cooked, they can eat it. Yeah. It's the same thing. They blow up. Pow. I don't know enough about birds, but I know, I don't know, whatever. I guess it's like when Bailey is eating something and she's just like, Slips little bites of it to Bindi. Yeah. I guess it's the exact same thing. Does Bailey eat raw pasta noodles? She seems like somebody who would. <clears throat> I have a confession. <laughs> the first, the answer is no. Okay. Okay. I'm not above eating parboiled ramen noodle. I love it. My favorite part of eating cheap ramen, because you know, cheap ramen, it's uh, it's fried. Yeah. They fry the noodle. So then it cooks really fast and you throw it in the water. That's why ramen is unhealthy. I mean, there's several reasons. That's the yeah. main reason why ramen is unhealthy because it's fried noodles that you boil. Okay, yeah. not the packet of just straight sodium. That's the second reason. <laughs> the third reason is empty carbs. Okay, ramen is not healthy. We can. I you. hope you understand this. That doesn't mean we shouldn't enjoy it on occasion. Okay. Anywho, my favorite part of eating cheap ramen is when I put my little noodle brick. <laughs> I'm not one of these heathens who's breaking up the noodle brick. I keep it intact and whole mm. and pure because I'm a pure boy. But sometimes I break put, it up. <laughs> get, get right, okay? That's what I, you need to get set straight. I don't know who's going to do it. I've, I'm about to send you up to the roof. Okay, I'm about to send you up to the roof to talk to some friends of mine. So anyway, my favorite part, let me get closer. My favorite part is when you put in the noodles in the water. Then you have the extra little bits of noodle in the package. You turn that over and you just throw that in your mouth. The little crunchy bits, the little bits and pieces of the fried noodle. It's so good. You're a monster. I had a friend growing up. He would break, he would put the noodles in a bag, break it up, then pour in the powder, then shake it up and have little like dried ramen chips. He's more of a monster. So see, Get out of here with I'm that. better than he is. Yeah. Here's the trick. Break up the packet, the noodle chunk. Here's what you do. Cody, Cody, look at me. Yeah. Don't break the noodles though. Because they're just laid and folded over. Yeah. So you break them and it cooks a little faster. Look, you keep you them whole. Time. You cook them for a minute or two no. and you flip them over. They're whole, Cody. The noodles remain whole because you can, as long as you break it along the right axis there. This is the other problem with what you intact. do. Now the noodles are separated. They're harder to get out. If you keep it in the brick, you can pick it all at once, throw it in your bowl. They're going to separate anyway when they cook. Not do you not much. cook them? They coat it. They really don't. If you can keep them in the brick, they can stay pretty well together. You can pick them up in like one or two goes. You got them. I feel like you're just not. I feel like you right. just throw your We're stuff gonna in We're going to do a ramen. I'm going to teach you how to make ramen. Here's the other thing you do with ramen. All right. You make your ramen in a big shallow pan because the water heats up faster. Put the ramen in, you cook it for like a minute. You flip it over, and then you crack a couple of eggs on top of it. Then you cover it with tinfoil or a lid. Cook it for the next two or three minutes. Boom. You basically have ramen with a poached egg baked into it. And then you put the noodle in, then you put it in your bowl, and you mix it together. You got a yolky egg in there. It's so good. Mm. You need to learn. You need to learn the ways of ramen. So there's cheap ramen, and there's good ramen. Good ramen takes time. I feel like you, Cody, based on what you're saying, you're not willing to put in that time. You're trying to mix the two. You're really which is wrong. A heinous. You're crime. really wrong. Heinous. I bought a discount case of fancy ramen, and it was, it was no, Cody. The so stuff in good. the in the package is not fancy ramen. It's not. No, don't do that. I'll go to a restaurant. I'll that. go to a ramen house and get ramen too. Okay, I appreciate ramen in all of its facets. As uncooked crispy noodles <laughs> i do i have some of the fancy ramen that like the air dried ramen it's not fried mm -hmm. that is a nightmare to eat <laughs> it's just like eating like uncooked pasta you know like italian yeah. pasta all right they the building let's talk about the union building okay uh -huh. they're longshoremen they're on the waterfront 
they have like a little tiny building right on the water. Okay. Yeah. And that's where it all goes down. They fit like 30 dudes in a building that I would argue is like 12 feet by 12 feet. Oh, it's not even that big. And I don't understand how many, it's like a clown car, how many yeah. people they had in there. I could not fathom it. Well, you saw like in the shot, the interior shots, like they're packed and they're like sardines. Like there is no, you can't move until the it's guy not next safe, to the door. Right? Like you can't fit that many people in a building. They're taking it down on for the sure. water. <laughs> All right. I mean, you saw they were in, like when he was just laying there on the thing. That shouldn't be in the water. The spot he was laying yeah. on at the end of the movie. It should not. We never, we never hopped on our thing into spoilers. Where are time. we going? And how are we getting there? It, it crane. It's going to lift us out of our ship that we've taken there and plop us in the spoiler mm, town. Let's do it. Here's my thing. Marlon Brando, he gets a gun. They take out his, is it his brother or his brother figure? His brother. His older brother. Yeah. He, the mob takes him out. Yeah. Marlon Brando. Which is just like, that's not how you get a dude to comply. You don't kill his brother, because now he's going to come for revenge. Anyway. They tried to kill him, too. Yeah, so Marlon Brando... I would argue they're bad at killing people. Yeah. He contemplates the revenge. He's got a gun. He's going around. He's shaking people up a little bit. He throws a loaded gun. Which is a bad idea, right? Yeah. I know that guns probably won't go off unless you're pulling the trigger. But if you're just throwing it at the wall... I mean, but there is one kind of gun that will most likely go off. And that's a revolver. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he's bad at his job. He's probably a good fighter and a bad. bad I don't know if it was his job to have a little pistol, which I feel like it was different types of pistols. Like they changed the type of like his brother pulled out a normal revolver. And then later when he has it in the bar. It's a little stubby. Yeah, yeah, it was stubby, huh? Which is not the same one as well. The same pulled one. On him. Yeah, that's a good. No, that's a good question. I I don't know. So again, who's this prop guy? Who do we need to? Kill? I don't understand. I thought they had it down to a science. You know, it's studio. Marlon Brando films. was the prop guy. <laughs> that would that would make sense. Um, his brother. Yeah, he has the speech with his brother in the car, right? And he's like. You should have looked out for me. Like I had to take dives and like that could have been my shot. I could have been somebody that was like, in fact, that is the uh, number three greatest movie line. They did like AFI did hundred lines over a hundred years. The best movie lines. Number yeah. three. I could have been somebody. I could have been a contender. Now I'm just a bum, you know, could have been a contender, been which a he contender. says later in another movie. I think doesn't he as an old man, probably could have been a contender like as the. The Godfather or something in the Godfather voice. Somebody yeah, says that. someone I does. I, I mean, it's a pretty uh, famously quoted line, but it's it is interesting to watch these older famous movies. and be like, oh, my gosh, so much of our culture. is just this. these things echoed over and over again, which this is all based on newspaper articles written about a real events of this really going down. Yeah, there's like one to one comparisons. They a mob did get taken down as a result. They're like, crap, we got to shut down like the entire New York <laughs> Like Longstrom and Associated, we gotta we gotta get the mob out of there. Like that did come from this. There's also speculation that like um part of it was about McCarthyism, right? Because it's like, okay, he's ratting on people, that kind of thing. The other thing people have said is, yeah, no, the director of this or the screenwriter was like a rival with the dude who wrote the crucible, <laughs> so which came out as a play. It was a play that came out right before this. So he's like, Yep, this is my response to that. So kind of interesting there. So, uh, Marlon Brando, I know you want to get to the Brando facts and we're almost, we're almost there. Okay. Oh, okay. I really, I did enjoy the ending. Um, cause it comes to the point where it's like, okay, he did confess. Here's the follow. What's going to happen next? You know, I thought he was going to get killed. He didn't get killed, but they were like, yeah, you're never going to work here again. He shows up at the dock anyway, gets into a fight with the mob boss, gets beat up by his henchmen. It's a really interesting moment. Cause it's just like, oh gosh, the union workers are still kind of following the mob's rule, you know? And after seeing him get beat up, they're like, no, we're, we're on Marlon Brando's side. They're like, we're not working unless he is working. So he has to like muster the strength, get up and like make his way to the boat and like lead the people, which I, I appreciate it. And I get, and most of all, I just appreciated like the editing they did for it. You know, it's him and he's stumbling and it's cut with blurry shots and 
is he going to be able to do it? And and that was the moment where I was like, this is a great movie in that, you know, it it uses the medium so well. Yeah. To to make it, you know, more meaningful, you know? Yeah. It also I like that it made it tense and it all it they like put a lot on it where it's like if he does this, it shows the shippers who are the ones who really are like in control of the docks. Yeah. Who has the power and they have the power to remove these guys. Yeah. And not have to like go through any legal system or anything. They can just be like, you're out of here. Mm hmm. It's interesting. The uh, I didn't even think about it, but one of the metaphors in the movie is the hawks versus the pigeons. Yeah. Because Marlon Brando kind of is talking to um, Eddie. Edie. 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 About and he's like, yeah, those are the, the hawks, and sometimes they're up the pigeons, but you know, it's just the way they is. You know, I, I like watching them. I like seeing them. You know, seeing what they do, or you know, I don't know. They had that conversation. Yeah, is that how it went? Went something like that. And you know, you see the mob boss, and they are the hawks, and you see all the workers, and they're just like, I just want to. I'm just a pigeon here. I just want to. Yeah, I just want well, to. Well, like him job. talking to his brother. You know, just a steady job and a couple extra potatoes. That's all he wants. Yeah. You know. Mm hmm. I thought it was, it was kind of almost an interesting piece of like Americana. You know, it's about unions and workers. And I, I did think it was interesting that by the end, it wasn't. You wonder what the romance, how, how much is that going to play into it? But it wasn't about the romance. It was really about, is he going to come clean and is he going to put the mob in that position? And is he going to let the truth come out and maybe make something better for everyone rather than just the hawks, you know, getting yeah. getting the best of everything um, yeah, and controlling everything. So I liked that that was really what the movie was about. And that was the ending was him stepping up and taking that responsibility and, and giving it to, to the people. Yeah. All right. Here's my question. Okay. What on earth is the deal with the poster to this movie? With the like, it looks like he's lipstick on. Yes, I was so con- I thought this was going to be like some some like it hot, you know, where it's like, all right, it's dudes. They're wearing dresses. It's whatever. This movie is in black and white. <laughs> It's in black and white, and it's about people who work on the docks. And the poster is in color, and he's got like red lipstick, and it looks like some kind of eyeshadow. And he's looking, it doesn't even look like the, him in the movie. He's, it looks like Marlon Brando in 20 years. What happened? Can you explain it to me? I think. Okay, here's my guess it's because it's a black and white photo that was painted. So they were just guessing that he so, looks like he slept with makeup on. And yeah. <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah. Cause I mean, even in ones that are more like color normalized and not yellow, it doesn't it look like it has like anything. Has is it supposed to look like he's gotten beat up or something? Or that's what I thought. Like, I thought that his whole mouth was red, like he had blood coming out of his mouth. But it, no, it's just his lips. Here's what I'm going to say. The, could they take color photos? in the 50s could they take color photos because the movies were black and white but pictures i think this is the era where there were when was it there were there was a period of time in hollywood where it was color and black and white in the 50s i know tvs weren't really quite in color yet but they could do a picture this yeah yeah so i think this is a picture of him and he has makeup on so i wonder if it's just because like like in I wonder if it's just the kind of the last vestiges of in plays where people will have like an enormous amount of makeup so that you're sitting in the back, you can see details of their face. But if you're in the front row, you're like, you look like a monster. Yeah. And that's why I wonder if that's what it is, because like I didn't realize. So this little side painting panel. It looks like a what you like a sketch you'd see in an old newspaper mm. of them in a, their fight yeah. and then him and the girl. I, I get I, this says that like dead by the, the early fifties, they were making color movies. That's what this says. This brief blurb. Yeah. There's, and then by the late fifties, most were being shot in color. So then, you know, there was some overlap there. I don't know. Whatever. 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 Who even cares? No one cares. The point this is, movie... Marlon Brando definitely wore makeup for this picture. <laughs> and I'm sure he put it on himself and the director asked him to take it off. I'm sure that happened. This yeah. movie won eight Oscars. And he deserved everyone. It deserved was, more. It was good. 
It was very good. I didn't look at the other movies this year, but it uh, won eight Oscars. It was pretty good. It was nominated for, I think, even one or two more. All right. Now we're, in, now we're into the Brando facts. This is what you've been hungry for. I'm sorry it took this long, okay? Yeah, it took too long. Uh, <clears throat> the director really wanted Brando for the role, but he knew he, he might not be interested. So <laughs> he did a screen test with the new hot guy in Hollywood, Paul Newman, you may know from Cool Hand Luke. Um, and so he shot a scene with him as test footage because he knew Marlon Brando would hear about it and get very competitive and upset that the new heart heartthrob was going to get it. And so he would do the movie. Nice. Totally worked because obviously because Brando did the movie. Also, at one point, they sent him the script and the screenwriter or the director, I forget which. I don't know if it's both. He put like a little piece of paper in the script to know if someone opened it or not. Marlon Brando said, I don't want to do it. Send it back. The script was never read. <laughs> no one had opened it up. So that's fun. Marlon Brando left every day at 4 p.m. And for a decent reason. Okay, his reason was his mother did die and he was seeing his therapist. So his therapist appointment, he had to leave it for. He had a hard out, as they say in the biz. Yeah. He had a hard out, 4 p.m. therapy appointment. So he left every day at 4 p.m. In fact, the famous cab scene... <laughs> You know, that I could have been a contender exchange. Yeah. They shot that. First off, he tried to improvise the scene. And he wrote in his autobiography, I improvised that, which has been debunked. They're like, no, you started to improvise it. And the director was like, buddy, no, cut it out. <laughs> Stop. So then they shot it as written. And that's what's in the movie. Anyway, furthermore, furthermore, because he left at 4 p.m., he shot his lines that when it came to shoot his brother's lines, Marlon Brando left because he had his appointment. So it was a stand in reading the lines for him. So he's like, and that actor to this day was is upset about it. He's like, yeah, I got He got to shoot his lines with me acting against him. I had to do acting against a dude, <laughs> like just a guy who was not Marlon Brando. So, yeah, so that's that's fun. He improvised the little glove. You know, when the Edie, Edie drops her glove and then he puts it on and wears it. <laughs> For no reason. I don't remember. A white that. glove. She drops one of her gloves and he like picks it up and puts it on. He's like wearing a lady's white glove for like the rest of the scene. Nice. That was improvised. Way to go. Way to go, Marlon. Um, let's see. I think. I guess. Um, <laughs> Marlon Brando's Oscar for this movie was either lost or stolen <laughs> and showed up for auction in London <laughs> like a few months later. They were like, Marlon Brando, did you mean. <laughs> Your Oscar is up for auction. Did you know about this? So just a fun, fun little fact. But did uh, he, he get it back? I don't know. I'm guessing they offered it. I'm, I don't know what happened to it after that. Um, my last fun fact, which is a little underwhelming, but uh, I wrote it, so I'm going to say it. Grace Kelly actually turned down the leading female part to be in rear window. Mm. Can you imagine the queen of whatever country she's queen of. Could have been the Mana's... Mm -hmm. Monte Carlo or Monascalco or Macaluso. You know, where she uh where 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 did she end up ruling? What? She was a princess? Grace Kelly. She's an American actress, then she married into royalty. The princess of Monaco. She's the princess of Monaco. Ah. Huh. Grace Kelly. Yes. What? There's a Mika song about her. Alright, whatever. Uh-huh. She's not in this movie. Oh. That's a. Those are those. Those are my notes. Those are my facts. What did I miss? <sighs> Nothing. Are you gonna That's put okay. Tyler's stamp? I mean, you already did. You already put your stamp on. I this put boy. my stank on this. As I would. Uh, would that's you, what I would. Would you say. recommend it to the average human? Oh, to the being? average person. Here's here's my dilemma when I recommend stuff because I always used to say I. I think if I like it, most people will like it because I have like the most basic view. Like, except like, now you're a hoity toity now. little West Coast indie garbage person. Is that what I'm understanding? Now I've, I would say I enjoy film, which means I'm a terrible <laughs> person, you know? Oh, uh, this is a great day. And uh, just, you know, so now I'm thinking if I like it, maybe no one likes it. Mm. But this movie does have. What you might ask, Cody? Did you look at the Rotten Tomatoes score? Did you look at the Metacritic? I don't know. What is it? Don't what even it look at it. Just tell me what it is. What is the tomato meter? It's high. Guess. 
Eight, yes. Uh, tomato meter, 92. 99, you fool. Oh, which is why it's on the, the list. 95 audience score. I mean, I would give it letter grade. What would you give it? An A. I would give it a B plus. <laughs> I, I liked don't it. Understand I enjoyed film. it. It was good. Could have been a contender. You don't understand film, Cody. Whoa, there's a movie called Grand Prix. Has a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, isn't it in the device? No, is it? I don't think so. You don't even know. I'm not putting a this. John Frankenheimer film on my list. I'm not a garbage person. <laughs> all right, I liked it. If you're at all interested in in uh, film cinema. I think it's part of the history. It's part of the culture. It's worth watching. It's worth a watch. There's floppy cigarettes. There's men not understanding how sandwiches work. There's everything. Yeah. There's a love story. If you like good classic films but hate new indie movies, you'll love this film. Yes. Because that's me. Mm. I don't want no picture where some priest wraps himself up in... I barbed wire then makes out with what's her face i don't want that you want that i don't want that no what i want is for you to have watched it too i want <laughs> someone else can't. to deal with the emotional weight of that scene here's the thing i watch a bad movie i make you watch it you watch a bad movie you say i don't, we can't do this this needs to be forgotten about and i appreciate that because then I don't have to watch bad movies. This is what Bailey does. This is what we should do. What? There's a rom-com she watched. She watches or any show someone recommends. She just fast forwards <laughs> through the B story. She's like, I don't care about any of this. Yeah. And that's what I need to do. I need to take you to the terrible indie movies that I've suffered through that I needed someone else to experience and just show you the four scenes that are like, can you believe this? Can you believe I paid to watch this? Can you believe we've had to pay to watch this now? Yeah, that's the so. problem. I think that's what your what your problem is is you you have convictions, and you don't want you hate the movie, so you don't want someone else to have to pay to watch a bad. Movie. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. The real question is, what is next? Um, My body is ready. Look, um, I need to know, and it better be a good one. I'm do you want here. while you're pulling it up? Do you want a bonus review? Hot take bonus review. Oh, it's already ready. No bonus review. Can I still Give do the me bonus, the bonus review? review? What? Give it to me. Uh, pig. Nicholas Cage. Pig. Well, are we not doing that as a whole review? Ooh. I mean, the problem is Tyler. There's no time. <laughs> we have a busy, busy schedule. We're not going to get to it. Because we're talking about hottest dudes. That's our problem. We All can right. do two in Fine. a night. I'll withhold it. I'll put it in. I'll put it in the device. I'll put it in the device for another time. OK, how about that? All right. Uh, you like that? I like that. All right. Divine the film. Tell me what's happening. What are we doing next? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> the picture, the film, <laughs> the, the quintessential cinema. indie production that is on both of our lists. <laughs> Robocop. This is the best day ever. This movie has been on my personal list since day one. <laughs> okay. I've been wanting to watch this movie forever and I need an excuse. You've given me this gift and I say thank you. Yeah. What you don't oh. know is I went and took out everything that was I would know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you're no better than the mob that's running the Longshoremen's Union. Uh, well, thank you for listening. Please share us, rate us, review us, opinion havers, wherever, wherever you, wherever's cool, yeah. wherever people aren't listening to podcasts. That's where I, that's where you should find it. Okay. Uh -huh. I want you on the hipsters podcast website app interface. The one that doesn't work that well, but you refuse to go to Apple. All right. To use Apple podcasts. Cause that's where the money is. Yeah. You're yeah. not about that. Yeah. All right, now the Steve code, oh. Jobs disowned his own probably birth daughter, and I will not support his company, even though he's dead. Hmm. So what I'll say is iTunes go to is a bad podcast. interface. 
I hate iTunes. Okay, we it's all hate too iTunes. Slow. It crashes all the time. It takes forever to sync. Why did we do it for so long? Why did we let it torture us? We all hate Steve iTunes. Steve Jobs. I'm. We need to go exhume this body <laughs> and dispose of it. His go to shadow iTunes. hangs over Rate, our souls. Don't listen to Cody. Rate us on iTunes. We need. Here's what we need. I want us to be on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. I've started. I've gone down the road. What do we need? The most BS thing. You need two hundred five star ratings on Apple Podcasts. Hold up. Hold up. That is their no, only. No. 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 Five stars. That's offensive. What if you just. A four star podcast. Is their opinion not as valid as a five nope, star podcast? You need a five star podcast means you're selling out. Yes. <laughs> if people like you too much, that means you're not given the real opinion. So I'm calling think, out Rotten Tomatoes. Please you think, let us in. Is there other ways? Please let me be no. part of your world. What if we have 8,000? We have a perfect score. So many reviews on any other podcast. No. Only Apple Podcasts. That's the only thing they'll accept. I take it. I take it back. Let's exhume Steve Jobs' body. We will put it on a pedestal. We will embrace it in iron, in in brass, in fine metals, and we will make a sacrifice to him. Will we get on Rotten Tomatoes then? Yes. Will that do it? I would like a Midsommar style ceremony, okay, where yeah. we honor him. And wear flower crowns. Yes. All right. We're on social media. <laughs> at Opinion Havers, you can yell at me on three, technically four platforms. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm ready for it. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Mastodon. <laughs> you don't what know if we have like, Mastodon. What if we just have like 50 toots on Mastodon that I've just never responded to? Oh. I'm a bad person. I'm, is Mastodon even around anymore? You know what? I, it's probably been bought there's out. There's a band been used as some sort of a ransomware. Mastodon dot social. Uh, oh, it still oh. exists. Oh, I hate it. Oh no. Oh, this is seem. Oh, oh man. Tweet at me and oh. tell me your thoughts on ramen. Can you eat it dry? Can you eat it wet? What do you do? What do you do with your ramen noodles? Four and a half million people use Mastodon. That is more people than the population of Monaco. Grace Kelly is the princess of Monaco. Just say the thing. Thanks the thing. for listening. Just and until next time, watch movies. And have opinions. Dare you uh, besmirch the population of Monaco? Uh, it is maybe an, that's who's using Mastodon. It is an island nation, probably. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's in Europe. Uh-huh. It is 500 acres large uh-huh. and 39,000 people live there. Less than people use Mastodon. We should go to Monaco.